uh, we don't know everything. We'll never know everything. And uh, for us early on, before we even bought that first flip, we went and met with people. I, I figured, you know, okay, if I got to get a loan, who do I know in the mortgage business? An old friend of mine's dad was the president of Royal Bank at the time. Met with him. Hey, who else should we be meeting with, Steve? He introduced us to other people. And we just went around and just started meeting people, networking, asking questions, trying to understand the process. All right, guys, here we go now. It is time to unlock more doors to deals. We're real estate investors here. We're real estate agents here. And we all have one thing in common. We believe that we can. We can live the life of our purpose. We can create financial freedom. We can build a better life for those that we love. And we can live the life of our dreams. I don't care if you're trying to do your first deal or your 500th this year. You can get to the next level. And we're here to help. Welcome to Doors to Deals. I'm your host and founder, Jim Manning. Today's episode can be found on doorstodeals.com slash 058. Thank you for tuning in. Today, one of my closest friends in real estate, Dave Nations, is on the line. He's an incredibly successful real estate uh, agent, an incredibly successful investor. Uh, he owns a brokerage. He's got a uh, ties into a staging company. He's got ties into to multiple businesses, multiple streams of income, and he is an A player. And I am excited for us to 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 talk to him and have a conversation about his story, how he's gotten to where he's gotten, and I uh, cannot wait to share this. This this episode is is um, is packed with amazing information. So uh, before we get started. Uh, if you are local to St. Louis, we have some phenomenal resources for you to help you do more deals. Three Doors Funding and lends out over $20 million of cash right here in St. Louis to help people do deals. Uh, we are lending a little bit out of St. Louis, but that's the majority is here in St. Louis. And if you're uh, so all you have to do is just go to doors to deals dot com slash zero fifty eight and click on the funding link. And then also, if you're a wholesaler and you have some properties um, we can buy the property if it fits our buy box and we can even buy it up to 95% of the after repair value. And if it doesn't fit that buy box, we also have, um, some contacts with some exclusive buyers uh, across the nation uh, that can close quickly and pay top dollar. So definitely, uh, let's collaborate. Let's do some deals together. And we've been putting together deals in the last couple of years that earlier in my career, the first decade in my career, I would have walked away from. And so I can't recommend you enough to deals at three doors.com. Send us over what you got and let's collaborate and let's put some together some deals. Even, even if you think that deal is a, a dead deal and not going to work out, we might be able to make it work. So, and then finally for your agents listening in, and this doesn't matter where you live over the past year, uh, we have been on pace to sell over $80 million in real estate and at an average price point of about 180,000. So we are doing a high volume and we're doing a lot of transactions. And the key to this all is, is by attracting and providing value to the right key relationships. And we have a challenge where we're gonna open the doors up to our business model on the agent side of things, share with you what our value proposition is, share with you how we're doing what we do and how you can create five key relationships that will generate you $5 million in sales volume every single year like clockwork. All you have to do is just go to doors to deals.com and click on the challenge link to sign up for our next challenge. So, all right, guys, no more talk. Let's get going on the interview. All right, today, welcome guys to another episode. We have a good friend of mine, uh, also, it's kind of been like a little bit of a doppelganger of mine, like uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> in real estate. Uh, Dave Nations and I have been buddies since um, I don't know, probably like 2010, something like that. I mean, it's been a hot minute. And um, when I met him, uh, we both had a weed and terrier. We both had kids around the same age. We were both real estate brokers. We were both investing in real estate. And like the stuff in common with this guy uh, is uncanny. Um, probably a better looking version of myself. I, I have to give him the, he's got a better smile than I do. But anyway, <laughs> so I've been pumped up, man. I'm so glad you're able to make it on this. And and um, anyway, I've been pumped up since we connected and, and, and decided to have you on this. So welcome. And why don't you kind of introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Sure. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me. This is fun. I appreciate you reaching out and uh, give me an opportunity to do this with you. Uh, it is funny how we met and never knew each other at all. And then uh, met at a, a conference. And next thing you know, after like five minutes of talking, 
it was like, are we sure we've never hung out before? Because we had so many similarities and knew so many of the same people and did like almost the same thing. It was, it was borderline creepy, uh, but uh, it worked out. And here we are. I think it was actually like 2012 that we met, but uh, either way, it's been, it's been a while. And I think we've both helped each other grow quite a bit along the way. And again, thanks for having me on. So uh, what do you want to know a little bit of background, I guess, on me? Um, so I got into real estate. I bought my very first house to rehab in 2004. Uh, I knew nothing about real estate, was not still I'm not handy. Uh, a buddy of mine called me one day and said, Hey, everyone's buying houses. We should buy a house and rehab it and resell it. And I knew nothing. I was like, okay. And I'm always very optimistic. So I just assumed it was going to work out. And um, we bought a house eight months later, we sold it. And I think I made like two grand and I thought it was the greatest thing ever. Uh, and I was like, wow, that was fun. We should do this again. So that kind of kickstarted me into real estate. And at that time was working in the healthcare industry and uh, slowly transitioned over. Got my license in 2007, uh, which if you're familiar with the real estate market, it was a great time to get in and become a realtor. Uh, so I started doing it part-time in 2007 and got a degree in urban planning and real estate development. Uh, from SLU. Uh, it was a master's degree that they had down there. And my goal was to go work with real estate developers and work on like, at the time they were doing all these big projects down in Wash Ave and they're converting those buildings into mixed use. And I thought that looked fascinating. Well, I graduated in 2009. And again, timing was perfect because uh, nobody was developing anything. So getting a job in that uh, space was, that was impossible, uh, I guess I would say. And since I have my real estate license, I just started selling more real estate. And um, over the time, we built up a real estate team and got back into real estate investing. And I've uh, been buying and flipping since 2010 uh, consistently and uh, built up a real estate team. Uh, last year, we sold 184 homes. And this year, we'll, our goal is to sell 240. So that's that's it as quickly as I could explain it. <laughs> Oh yeah, no big deal. Just 180 homes, you know. <laughs> Last year, that's amazing, dude. So, you know, another thing we have in common is I also don't know what a screwdriver is. I'm very handy <laughs> as well. <laughs> and yet, here we are, both flipping houses. That's amazing, right? Like I, tell everybody, I don't know how to do anything. I just know someone that does, and that's that's what I can help with. So, there's a, there's a desk that needs fixed in the office, and they're like, Caleb, can you bring a drill in and fix this for us one day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it had been it had been like broken for like a couple of years he comes in in like five minutes it's like fixed <laughs> like, like, oh that was it oh man i thought we should have bought a new desk <laughs> so yeah. so starting out in like 2009 i mean that was a super time tough time like to graduate and uh get into real estate what were some of the stuff that made you so successful early on through some of the toughest times in real estate so uh, graduate, uh, graduating from uh, the master's program in May of 2009, I had a baby on the way in August and I uh, told my wife that this was the game plan. We're going to go, I'm going to go and sell real estate and be a realtor. And uh, she looked at me like I was crazy and essentially just said, okay, well, let's give it a shot for a year. And if you make X amount of money, then, then we'll keep it going. And so, you know, knowing I had a baby on the way, uh, the pressure of that, and then of course, just trying to be a successful person in general, I think were things that I needed to go out and just figure it out. At that time, uh, a buddy of mine and I, the guy that I bought that house with in 2004, had our own brokerage and uh, he was a, a licensed attorney. So we started our own brokerage. We knew absolutely nothing. Uh, we didn't have any training. Uh, we just had a lot of grit and, um, and I guess uh, optimism that it was going to work out. So I uh, went out and just started meeting people, doing open houses, talking to family, friends, getting referrals. In fact, a lot of family friends early on didn't work with us because they knew us and were like, oh, I don't know if I want to work with these guys. Uh, they don't know what they're doing. And so it made it a little bit more challenging to uh, earn everyone's business and trust. And so really it was just going out and trying to talk to people, tell them what I was doing, um, make phone calls, do open houses, meet other business owners, make connections, and really started building the business based on referrals and, and uh, relationships and trust. And that's ultimately 90% of our business annually is referrals. So that's really where it started from. Nice. That's awesome. So just making a lot, as many contacts as possible. Yeah. I mean, it was just getting out and connecting with people. I'm not the guy that likes to go and pick up the phone and just straight cold call or just door knock. I'll do it if I have to, but really I'm more of a, you know, how can I go out and meet people? Uh, I, I've always told people like, I love going out to going out to parties, going to events, going to meet people and just getting to figure out, Hey, where do you live? How long you live there? 
start talking real estate. And then maybe there's an opportunity there. Maybe there's somebody that they know, maybe they're thinking about selling, you know, and that was really what I did to connect and uh, try to find as much business as I could. That's awesome. So how did you, you did your first flip in 2004. How did, how did that go? And then how did you continually start flipping houses down the line? Sure. So we bought that house and essentially both of us had other jobs. Um, and so we went there on, you know, after work, you know, after hours kind of thing on the weekends and just sort of messed around with this place. Uh, and uh, our dads ended up really coming in and helping us because um, they knew we didn't know what we were doing and, um, you know, found some other contractors to help us along the way. This project, knowing what I know now, we probably should have had this thing done in like two weeks, three weeks tops. I mean, it was very basic, very cosmetic, you know, paint, uh, redo the kitchen, redo a bathroom. And that was it, right? Uh, eight months later, uh, we got it done. And uh, we actually, this is kind of funny, we hired, we, neither of us had our licenses yet. We hired a flat fee company to sell it uh, so we could save the money. And then my buddy, who was an attorney, got his license so we wouldn't have to pay realtors. We didn't want to have to pay any fees and we could find our own pro- uh, our own houses, that kind of thing. And then we became realtors. Uh, so I always think that's kind of funny. I was trying to avoid them. And then here I am as one. Uh, but that was our first house. And like I said in the beginning, we really made like a couple of bucks, got our money back and then made a little bit of money. And I learned a ton. I think that was the biggest thing was just the experience behind it, what that takes, what it looks like. Um, you know, and then fast forward, we really didn't start doing it consistently until 2010. And at that point, from those first couple projects learned that I don't know how to, I shouldn't be the one doing this. That's not my strong suit. Let me go find people that do this well, and I'll go find the house. I'll figure out how to fund it. I'll figure out how to pay for it, but I got to find somebody else how to do the work. Somebody that does it better that we can do it quicker and we can turn these things quicker. And that's, that's where we landed on and, and found that that works better and not having me paint and, you know, all I can do really well is break stuff. So maybe demo, but otherwise uh, stay out of the house and let somebody else handle it. So, so I feel like if I can just kind of add to this guys, like, like what Dave, what Dave just said, there was just so powerful having like a self-awareness, like the amazing thing about real estate and really business in general is, is you don't have to be good at everything. <laughs> What you really need to do is, is if, if know yourself, know if you have a weakness, and then just go find somebody that you can trust that's that's good at that, that can fill that gap. And I think a lot of times we get ourselves into a lot of trouble if we try and do everything and and don't play on our own individual strengths, right? So um, uh, it does hurt the ego a little bit, especially for guys like me that want to think that I can do everything. But uh, but that's really powerful, man. That was uh, and that took you. It only took you six years though to figure that out from 2004 to 2010. <laughs> well, not yes and no. Uh, you know, th- there's other thing called money uh, that uh, we bought another house in 2006, and then after that, no lenders wanted to give us any money. I barely made any. So, you know, for a while, buying buying anything uh, real estate related was off the question, you know, was was out of the question rather. So, yeah, no, it didn't take me that long. <laughs> uh, but thank you for that. <laughs> and then I think the other thing to hit on is like a lot of people get so scared, like the paralysis by analysis. It's like, guys, he jumped in and did a deal and learned. Like sometimes your, your first deal is never going to be all run. Your first deal is never going to knock it out of the park. You just seem to get a deal done. You're going to learn so much through it that you can hit little singles so you can build up to those big home runs that come later down the road. So many, so many new investors want to just try and make a hundred grand in the first deal. So, so Dave, you mentioned earlier, like you just had an optimism about it. Like you just thought it was going to work out. Can you like elaborate on that a little bit more? Like, like how you kind of had the. Yeah. I mean, anyone who's worked with me knows that like when we, when somebody comes up with an idea or I come up with an idea, I immediately think of all the reasons why it's going to work and how it's going to be amazing. And it's going to be the greatest thing ever. And oh my gosh, yeah, let's do this. And nowhere in there have I thought about like, okay, what are the legalities? What does it cost? How long is it going to take? Um, what's, what are the downfalls? You know, all of that. I'm just like, oh my God, this is going to be it. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, let's do this. And I'm already gone doing it. And everyone else is like, whoa, 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 what, what are we doing? You know, and then they start telling me like, what about this? What about, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I hadn't thought about that, you know? So uh, it's good to surround yourself with people that also uh, balance you out and um, help think about some of the things that maybe we don't. And I think it's very similar to what you just pointed out, Jim, that, yeah, I was, I knew, I realized I wasn't good 
certain things. So I found somebody else that was right. And this is like that. Like, I know that I'm always the guy that thinks everything's going to work out. So I, you know, having others that kind of help balance that and bring, bring me down a little bit uh, and understanding like, okay, here's what we need to think about. Okay, cool. And now if I feel like we've worked those through, we're going to move forward and, uh, and we're going to make it happen. So. Yeah, it's it's funny as you're talking. I just like had a flashback to uh, our mid twenty year old selves when we just met each other because that's exactly how I am too. Like I'm an optimist too. Like just hanging out, having some beers, and being like, "Oh my gosh, this is the same person as me. This is awesome." <laughs> it's like yeah, it's hilarious, man. So okay, so um, all right, so you started. You know, the, there is one kind of a little bit of a difference between the two of us. Just so you guys know, is is, is Dave? You actually start out as more like you were flipping, but you were probably more like an agent first and then also like an investor. I kind of did the opposite of, so if you were like 70, 30, I was like more 70, 80% investor, 20, 30% agent. So, so that was like a little bit of a difference. Uh, did you, was, was the agent thing and doing that first, was it, mo- it was like, walk me through kind of like why you built that up to a higher level first over the investing. So we, so I told you about the first one we bought. We bought a second house in 2006, put a ton of money into it, massive project. I don't know why we thought we could take that on. Long story short, we didn't sell it. We still own it today as a rental. And then um, and then as the market shifted, couldn't do any more flips, right? So I got my real estate license. So on accident, I just sort of started selling real estate because that's what was in front of me. That's what I, I realized that real estate was something I was excited about and passionate about. So I jumped into it. Uh, what I realized along the way too, is that being a realtor actually gave me an education on really understanding what's a good deal and what isn't uh, in the investor world. Uh, going out and helping buyers buy a house really understood what buyers like. You know, So I'm going to rehab a house. What should I be focusing on? Not how cheap can I buy something and put it in the house and how much money can I make when I sell it? Really, what do buyers like? What should the kitchen look like? What co- paint colors? You know, Whatever that kind of stuff is. I didn't know any of that, right? On those first couple of houses, we were just looking at, okay, here's how much money I have. How do we do the whole project with that amount of money? You know, and not thinking about who the buyer is, how much are we really going to sell it for, any of that kind of stuff. And so being the real estate agent and helping these people buy a house, looking up comps, educating them on what they'll sell for, what they're worth. Hey, if we were to sell this today, here's where I think we should be, you know, that kind of stuff. Being an agent is really what gave me the confidence that much more to go out and buy properties because then I knew areas because I sold already in there and was like, oh, that's a good deal. Like we sold a house down the street or I've been looking at comps in here. I already know that. So my confidence level was increased because of it. And along the way, I got paid, right, as a real estate agent. So I got an education on to realize what was a good deal, uh, acting as a realtor first. And then being able to do that allowed me to have an income to then afford to go out and invest. Because I talk to a lot of folks, as I'm sure you guys do, that get their license to be investors. And I've always been, because it worked for me, I'm like, hey, I would go out and sell real estate, you know, do this. I think it's a great way to learn this. And you don't own the house, right? You're helping these people buy and sell. So your risk is a lot less. You didn't go out and buy a deal and then thinking it was going to work and the whole thing flopped and now what, right? Yeah. So, so I agree with what, oh my gosh, you there's just so much wisdom on what you just said there. Um the, 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 the thing I'd add to it guys on this and, and Dave mentioned earlier, like the discount, uh, agent or whatnot, like, like when I started, when I actually worked with a couple of buddies that were buying houses as a buyer's agent, it's like my, the best man at my wedding was like the first guy I was a buyer's agent for, uh, for some reason, I guess, uh, Dave, my best friend trusted me and yours did. And I don't, <laughs> I don't know why, but maybe he's, maybe he's uh, dumber than your best friend, but, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like, so it is invaluable to have that. Now here's the only caveat to that guys is, is either you have it or you have a quality agent that already has that and knows that, that you can rely on as a partner. That knowledge is necessary to have a legitimate flipping investment company operation going. And, but it doesn't have to be you. We kind of talked about that earlier. It doesn't have to be you that has that knowledge, but you do have to have a team member that's, that's not just a Joe Schmo that will, will sell your house for 500 bucks. It's somebody that's a quality individual uh, because you get what you pay for, right? So yeah. you're 100% right on that. Like, absolutely you don't need to go through that. I did it because it was really at the end of the day, that's all I had, right? It was like, you got to figure this out, you know, or go get a job somewhere else. And I knew 
before I even went to college, I had zero desire to go work in the corporate world. I was going to go out and build a business myself. So my dad did, and it was something that I wanted to do. And I didn't know what it was going to look like. I just knew I wasn't going to work for the man and I was going to go figure this out. And at that moment, real estate was that opportunity. So I just went and did it. Um, you know, and that's how I learned this. So it wasn't like I planned like, Oh, I'm going to go be a realtor, learn this, then going to be an investor. It just accidentally happened that way. So you're hundred percent right. Go out and find somebody that's really good at that role and then be that person for you. And then you can still focus on just the investing. Hey, Caleb, I'm interested in your perspective on this. Do you have anything to add on this man? No, I mean, I definitely think it takes, I, I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday that wants to start flipping and uh, it, they're looking at doing their first house, kind of like how you talked about partnering with an agent that understands the business and understands real estate is they, you know, they're like, well, we're going to put the master upstairs. And I, I had a conversation with them around this house. Well, I thought the master should be downstairs because of the age range of the people who probably have older kids that are going to buy this house based on the way the yard is and stuff like that. And the guy looked at me and he's like, holy cow. He's like, I never thought of that. He's like, you changed my whole way that I looked at this house. And if we cater it to the right family, they might pay 10, $20,000 more than, you know, catering it to the wrong audience. It might even be more than that. I mean, the decisions like that can make or break a a successful flow. Yeah. So we were, we were looking over the numbers for this particular deal. And if he, in my opinion, if he had the bedroom upstairs where I don't think it belonged, I, it wasn't going to be very profitable, but it's probably going to add, you know, 20 grand in profit. And make this a good deal if he puts it downstairs. I, I remember when I first started dating Kelly, I had a flip going and I was like, oh, this master would be so sweet upstairs. And she walked in and she said, no, my mom's going to buy this house. And there's not one mom that wants to live above their small kids because it's going to be a starter home for a family. And I was like, oh, OK, <laughs> well, I guess I was wrong there. You know, so it's a, it's amazing having those resources. Yeah, David, so, it's it's like, sa- it becomes a safety thing, right? They, they don't want their kids on the first floor. If somebody breaks in, they can't be there to protect them. Uh, even though we're all sleeping at the moment anyway, but no, it's totally a safety thing. I get that. So yeah, it's a great point. Yes. I think, uh, especially starting out a lot of people, they want to become a realtor and flip houses. And in my opinion, if you're starting out, work with a seasoned agent, you know, interview the best people in your area, work with them. That way you can get, you get your money worth out of the commission you pay. There's some agents that you're not going to get your money worth, but it's definitely important to work with a seasoned, uh, a seasoned agent that's going to give you the best advice. For sure. Yeah. And there's ways to do, yeah, there's ways to get started where you kind of do both. Like you can strategically work as an agent and then the investor niche where you're learning, making commissions with seasoned investors and making money that way too. Like it's just, there's all sorts of great ways to do it. I mean, I, I think the biggest thing is, is to choose a path and like commit to it. Don't just go to like halfway down one or halfway down the other like make a commitment and, and, and get into action mode and go, right? Yeah, so, yeah uh, action mode. Just understanding it takes time. You're not going to be successful in your first six months. You might make some money, but it takes time and it's doing a lot of deals to learn. Uh, Dave, I think you were going to say something I cut you off, buddy. Sorry. No, you're, you're good. Go ahead. So, all right. Well, let's get back to you, man. So, um, uh, so you're starting to build the agent business and you've always had the eye for this investing because you start out flipping and that was actually really kind of more your headspace around why you're in real estate anyway to start with. The agent business starts to take off. At what point did you become an owner of a, uh, of Keller Williams office in, in uh, uh, Keller Williams Southwest? Yeah. So, um, so as I said, we had our own independent company. And then in 2011, um, ended up rolling it over to Keller Williams. My partner, as I said, was a licensed attorney. So he stayed in the attorney world and I jumped over into uh, Keller in 2011. So I've just celebrated my 10 years at KW, uh, which is awesome. And uh, became an investor, I wanna say it was in 2013 in that market center. And uh, that's been a great opportunity to be able to be a part of that and help grow uh, the market center that we have there. And 20 in, so 2011 is when I joined. 2012, I made my first hire for a real estate team, which was Catherine. Uh, and actually, we just celebrated her nine-year anniversary on our team on July 23rd. So uh, her and I have been together for quite some time building this operation. And um, to date, we've got 13 people on the team, uh, seven uh, licensed agents, and the rest are the operations team. So, so walk, yeah, walk me into like kind of like her role and, and how she supports your team. 
Hey there, if you're looking to get the ultimate edge for your real estate investing company, go to dorsadeals.com slash invest for more information. Just so you know, a high percentage of the people that we interview on this podcast are actually already Three Doors Network members. And our network members have a lot of extra resources. They have an access to an online training vault with over three years worth of content in it. They have access to vendor savings like our Home Depot discount uh, that's literally saved thousands of dollars for members. And uh, we have a weekly group coaching call and we have a lot of other great things as well as part of the, um, the Three Doors Network. So make sure that you check it out on doorstodeals.com slash invest. So walk, yeah, walk me into like kind of like her role on and how she supports your team. Uh, sure. I mean, she started out as the uh, the admin, and if anyone's ever read the book The Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller, uh, you know your first hire is that admin hire, and uh, so that's what I was following and brought her in, and she did pretty much everything right that uh, you know that wasn't about the selling or out in the field, and just jumped in, and you know from there. Uh, We brought in a second hire and slowly kind of her job kept morphing. Uh, Today, she is our, what we call a chief of staff. So she oversees all the operations team. Jeremy is our director of operations, but she works with him. Uh, She helps uh, with Nations Brothers Renovations on the company that we have there. She helped hire our our, uh, first admin that we just brought in, Gail, uh, back in, I want to say it was March. And she helped us with that. And then uh, her and I actually have a coaching uh, company that we've been coaching we got about a dozen agents right now uh, that we've been doing for about a year and a half. And uh, so we launched that together and with an intent to really help others build a team, build their businesses uh, and provide the sales side, the business side for me and the operations systems tracking from her. So, uh, so she helps kind of a little bit of everything. Yeah, that's amazing. So yeah, talk to about the, the nation's renovation company, uh, nation's brothers. Um, so Jeff, uh, uh, Jeff's your brother's name for those of you don't, that don't know. Uh, when did Jeff come kind of come into the picture on these flips as you, as you guys started ramping up those? Yeah. So Jeff and I got together in 2010 on this and bought our first project was over in Richmond Heights on, uh, I still remember, 7728 St. Albans Avenue uh, in Richmond Heights. We ended up rehabbing three uh, over a couple of time, a couple of years on that street right by each other. Um, but got a great deal over there. Um, got uh, actually my father-in-law uh, was my um, investor and he backed us and we were able to go out, buy a property, fix it up, resell it, made some money, reinvested it back in. And that was our start into flipping all over again. And the first year, I think we did two. And then the next year, I think it was four. And then it slowly kind of kept going from there. Uh, we eventually got um, hooked up with um, Midwest Bank Center for us, who we've been working with for a while. We have a, a line of credit with them and uh, allowed us to start funding all of our deals. And we um, you know, really just kept every deal because I had the real estate team. My brother was in uh, medical sales and uh, he, so we both had other jobs. So all the money we were making from our flips, we we're just rolling it right back into the company. So we could scale this and get to a place where we could be doing two, three, four, five at a time, as opposed to two or three a year. Um, and we've got now we've got three full time guys that work for us on payroll. Uh, and then, as I said, we brought in Gail as our admin um, in March and uh, been able to continue to build this thing. And along the way, have uh, we've got 45 doors now as far as rentals. And the whole idea for us in doing this was we wanted to do the rehabs to generate income so we could buy rentals, right? Uh, in the beginning, it was like, if we went and bought a rental and we put that 20% down, at, in my mind at that time, I wouldn't have any money to then go do anything else. So I have to sit and wait a while. Instead, if we went and flipped houses, generated enough cash, we'd go buy a rental and then keep flipping, then go buy a rental, you know, that kind of thing. And slowly we uh, built up our portfolio doing it that way. Uh, we've sold off a few over the years, um, and uh, started dabbling into some multifamily stuff. One of the buildings we own is a 20 unit that we bought in March of last year, uh, right as the pandemic was happening and everything was shutting down. I was freaking out like this may be a big mistake, but we're going to do it anyway because I'm optimistic it's going to work out. So um, yeah, so that's kind of from start to finish where we are now. That's what we have going on. And we've got right now two projects for finishing and uh, three or four more in the hopper to get started. So it's been. So, so, and your guys' setup is he's really managing 
the 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 construction and you're kind of doing the sales on or how do you guys have that Correct. partnership? Yeah. Jeff runs the crew. He deals with the guys that work for us, checks in with them daily, checks on the properties. He's uh, coordinating with the with the subs, getting them in and out of there. Uh, his wife, uh, Kelly, actually does all the design work on our house as well. So she's, you know, picking out the tile, the light fixtures, paint colors, you know, that kind of stuff and coordinating that. And they're coordinating, getting it all to the properties. Uh, my role is finding the properties, selling the properties. Up until we hired Gail, I was paying all the bills, doing all the QuickBooks, tagging all the receipts, doing all the back end stuff on the weekends. Uh, and that was up until March of this year. I was just about to ask you, do you sleep? Like, how the hell did you get all this stuff done, man? <laughs> this is incredible. Yes, yes six people in his operations team. That's how. Well, now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's unbelievable. That's amazing. It's it's having a lot of support. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, um, the real estate team is, is at a really good place uh, and runs and if I weren't there, it would run. It would run amazingly. Probably. I mean, actually, for three years, I ran the Keller Williams Market Center as a team leader. And those three years, our team continued to grow because of the operations and the sales team and the support and everything that that we have there allowed it to do that. So it's in a really good place. That you know, if I need to spend some more time on Nations Brothers and figuring some things out, I can do that. Um, so it's not like yeah, I'm working 24/7. Um, but yeah, paying the bills and doing the receipts, you know, all that kind of stuff was not exciting, but somebody had to take care of it. Uh, so I was kind of, I'm, my role is more of the back end on that, um, helping with the business, getting it built, uh, figuring out systems, working with Gail for us to be able to scale this thing now that we have a full-time admin, uh, and Jeff is just knocking down, uh, these houses and getting them done. And he's come up, I mean, he's really good at, I mean, from the day we buy them to the the market we're probably three months in and out uh and that's like we just finished a 2700 square foot house and that's about the time that he turned it around and he's just good at it and he's figured out how to make it happen quick and i think that's also key so we're not stuck holding them for eight months like my first one or a year or whatever so, so if i can just kind of make a comment on their relationship guys like uh so it can be tricky working with brothers uh in this case you guys are pretty lucky because you're good at different things, right? Like, like if, if Jeff wasn't good at managing rehabs and kind of had more had a similar skill set with, uh, with Dave, like, like that would be a tricky partnership to have because, you know, you have the, you guys are finding a lot of houses to buy probably, but like they're not getting renovated properly. And so you're not making the profit margin you should. Right. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of a fortunate thing. I think it really can work with family, uh, if you have kind of that synergy of your skill sets, because uh, the trust is going to be there to start anyway, most likely, depending on what family you're in, right? Um, uh, but is there any any advice you could give us on like working with a family member like that uh, for people that maybe do have that synergy and skill sets? So I was blessed early on out of college. I well, my dad had a company, like I said, in healthcare that I went to go work for, and I was doing marketing for him. And then uh, had another, he had another small operation that my brother and I actually took over and we were running with that for a bit. So we actually worked together previous to ever being in real estate. And uh, so I think that that helped just sort of the dynamic. Um, I think just like you said, Jim, knowing your strong suits, knowing what you're good at, you know, Jeff is very persistent and he's good at that. Right. And he can stay on somebody. And I think in this world, you know, staying on top of the contractors, you know, are you there? Are you coming now? How about now? Are you done? When are you coming? Are you there? It's not done. Where are you doing? You know, that type of approach works and gets it done. I, I don't have that in me to, you know, I'm like, oh, you're not going to, okay, well, when do you think you can come back? Oh, we'll be there in a week. Okay. And week comes by. Well, no one's here. You know, like I would take me forever, but Jeff can, Jeff just has that personality. So knowing that and understanding like, Hey, he's really good at that. Let him stay in his lane and I'll stay in mine. And he takes care of it. I think that's what works. Right. And it's, we talk daily, probably multiple times a day. So a lot of communication too. Hey, I saw this over here, you know, cause my role in selling it, I'll check on these properties periodically and Hey, what are you, what are you doing with this? Hey, what's happening with this? Is this getting done? Yep. You know, and it's not to nitpick, it's to make sure that, you know, he thought of it because he goes there every day, maybe he missed it or, you know, didn't think of it. And if I'm the guy that has to sell it, hey, I'd recommend we do it this way. You know, if we're going to sell the house, like Caleb was saying earlier, right? If we're going to do this, this is what I would do because I think this is what's going to get us most bang for a buck. That's what I, you know, and my wheelhouse is knowing that because I'm a realtor first, right? So 
yeah, it's knowing knowing each person's strong suit and letting them do that and staying out of their way. Uh, so I love that. And like, I, I want to, so I have another question for you and I want to kind of give a little bit of context behind this question. Uh, so like, like guys, like, like Dave, we have listeners that listen in that, you know, some are kind of trying to do their first deal. Some are seasoned investors just looking to scale, grow. Uh, some are kind of agents looking more to get into the investing route. And um, uh, you have a lot of amazing things going on, right? Like you have a, a top, I don't know what percentage you are nationwide, but you're probably like a top 10% top 5% realtor on a na- national scale uh, based on the volume you're doing. You have a coaching company. You have a flipping company that's doing several flips. You have 50 do- fifty properties that you own, one of which has 20 doors. Like, like when you look at all of these successes, you look at all of these things, like it's an amazing thing. It's, it's amazing, right? And the one thing, how we started out this conversation, guys, was he did his first flip in 2004 his second flip was 2006. His third was 2010. That's six years, guys, right? So don't get so frustrated. If you look at all of these accomplishments that, that Dave's doing and compare himself to yours, if you're kind of more beginning or kind of more intermediate, right? Compare yourself to like, like the first deal that Dave did and the second deal that he did as you're just starting out and give yourself some patience, give yourself some time. So what would be you know, like just knowing kind of like, like all of this, right? Like what would be like one piece of just simple advice uh, that you would tell, that, that you would tell kind of our listeners that, 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 that they could put into play and that they, that, that could help them out. Yeah. So first of all, thanks for pointing out to everyone that I'm really slow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am too. I did one deal in my first 18 months. So we have that in common too. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Um, no advice. I think the biggest thing that I, I like to share with people is I think it's being open-minded and being coachable, right? Uh, we don't know everything. We'll never know everything. And uh, for us early on, before we even bought that first flip, we went and met with people. I, I figured, you know, okay, if I got to get a loan, who do I know in the mortgage business? An old friend of mine's dad was the president of Royal Bank at the time. Met with him. Hey, who else should we be meeting with, Steve? He introduced us to other people. And we just went around and just started meeting people, networking, asking questions, trying to understand the process, right? And I don't need to know everything. Obviously, I just jumped in and did it at some point. Uh, but I think surrounding yourself with people that know what they're doing, having people, again, who know their expertise and having them with you. You know, for us right now, it's, you know, do you have a good CPA? Do you have a good attorney? Do you have a good realtor? Do you have a good contractor, right? Do you have a good lender, a good, you know, hard money guy, whatever that is, right? That's your team. So, you know, find those people that you can be leaning on and that's your support network as well. And I think, again, ask a lot of questions, talk to as many people. I mean, meeting you in 2012 uh, and, you know, what you guys had going on, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, this is awesome that I just met this guy and, you know, um, and all of a sudden you're doing what I want to do, you know? And so being able to then, share that with each other and how you're doing it and what you're doing and vice versa, I think helps, right? So the more we can connect with others and mastermind and just get those ideas, I feel like it was a huge help for me. And it's constantly like that. And as you continue to grow and then you get to another level where I'm in a space, where I'm like, I don't know, I haven't been here before. This is new. So who can I talk to that can help me? You know, and that's being, again, open-minded and understanding, like, I don't know everything, but there's somebody out there that knows better than I do. So who is it? And, and go talk to them. So I would, you know, what's interesting is guys, I call that being humble and being really effing strong. You know, it takes strength to admit when you don't know something, it takes strength to, to go to someone else and say, Hey, I don't know this. What do you think? Okay. Like, like I, when I did one deal in my first 18 months, the biggest reason I did one deal in my 18, first 18 months is, is I was too ashamed or too scared to admit to other people. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And so I put myself on an island. I tried to study online, online courses. I bought a thousand dollar course that really wasn't all that helpful. I, you know, I did all this stuff, but I didn't want to be that guy in the room that didn't know. And I was too scared to like go out and network and, and do things. And, and that, my goodness, that held me back. Now the process is different. Like, it's like, if I'm trying something new, I'm going to find the person that's been there. And I'm going to ask them a bunch of questions. I do the exact same thing. That's all I do now. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. I mean, somebody already knows it. And I think, again, looking at my my history of being on my own and our own independent company, and I got licensed in 2007, 
So from 2007 to 2011, I was on my own. And I'd say about the most we ever sold was 3 million. It's fine. No big deal. I thought it was great, right? But then going to a bigger company, surrounding yourself with people that are doing more than what you're doing, being able to tap into that space and go to my first mega camp down in Austin. And, and at the time, um, Ben Kenny was like the new thing, uh, talking about Craigslist and how he was generating a thousand leads a month and the amount of business he was doing. I'm like, oh my God, you know, and listening to these other top agents, like, holy cow, there is so much more opportunity, right? And I think realizing that, and again, going out and then, okay, cool. How do I do that? How do I do that? Yeah. That allowed me to then go from just doing 3 million a year for five years to then going 3 million, 6 million, 12 million, 18, 20, 30, you know, 40, fit, whatever, right? And continue to grow at a faster pace because you're open to just exploring and asking questions and finding out what others are doing and how they're doing it. And then, and then it's on you to execute it, right? I mean, I'm willing to share whatever you want to know. At the end of the day, you got to go out and do it. I think it's it's important to know a little bit of what he just said, because I get asked a lot, like, why are you a killer? Why don't you start your own brokerage? And what people don't realize, right? It, I mean, so it's the circle of five. Rising tides bring up all shifts. If you're not looking at somebody else who's above you and asking them questions, you'll never get there. Uh, so those of you guys that are, you know, sitting around by yourself, you need to network with people that are are doing where, what you want to do. So you can ask them questions and push yourself to get to that level. You'll never, you'll never get past doing three deals in six years absolutely so all right so dave uh if we waved a magic wand five years from today you know i'm kind of curious like where are you heading man like what what would you be celebrating that that got accomplished uh in the seven on um 2000 in 2026 wow um well i know one of our goals for our real estate team is over the next by the end of 2023, we want to be closing 500 units a year. Uh, I want to have 20 full-time agents on our team. Uh, the renovations business, our ultimate goal is, you know, to be cash flowing. My brother and I were just talking about this. How do we, how do we passively generate, you know, each half million dollars a year from our rental portfolio? So what does that have to look like? So building it to get to that level, uh, you know, so that's going to take some time and quite a few doors to get there uh, and or paying off some either way. But ultimately, from the renovation side, we I love doing the flips. So I don't think that'll ever go away. Uh, but it's, it's to create that passive income, that long term wealth that we can have that I can have for my kids and their kids, kids and, you know, build something massive like that. Right. So, and so from, yeah. So I love that. Here's the interesting thing, guys. Um, uh, did you hear how like uh, most people that I would ask that question to like would not be as specific as Dave just was there. I mean, he kind of knows what he wants and what he's going after. Like one of the, the the most difficult things in business to do is if you don't have a clear vision, like, like, well, where the hell are you going? Do you want to go? I mean, it's like going on vacation. Are you going to Colorado or Florida? Well, that, that's two way, two different. Uh, that's two different trips there. That's two different input, like uh, end game there end goals. And like, I mean, he's pretty specific there, guys. And what's interesting is, is like, like, like to get to like Dave's level, like he had to get that clear to get to where he's at and to get to the next level, he's having to get even more clear. And the guys that are like the Elon Musk is or the Bezos is of the world. I bet you they could answer that question even more specifically. And they're probably thinking a little bit bigger too, right? Like they're, they yeah, they're may not be space. thinking, they, yeah, yeah. They may not be thinking 500,000. They might be thinking five billion dollars a year or whatever the heck craziness it is. Um, uh, but just be aware of that, guys, is the business is an instrument to get you to where you want to go. But if you don't take the time to figure out where you want to go, the results aren't going it, to, it, it, it'll, it will maybe get you there, I guess. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a maybe and a maybe is not good enough in my book. Um, well, I would say to people, like, if you don't know where you want to go, how do you know when you got there? If yeah. you don't set a goal, you never have a plan to get there. And a lot of people, they put a crazy goal out there, but they don't set a plan and focus on the plan. They just look at this goal that's five years out. But I think what you've done is you've literally set your goal. And then I guarantee you, we could have an hour conversation to tell me every step of the way you're going to do to get there or almost every step. Yeah. From what I know right now, right? And, yeah. it, and it'll evolve and it'll change. And if we were to do this a year from now, that's probably a different answer, you know? Um, but yeah, right now that's, that's where we're heading and it's exciting. So, so that's amazing, man. Yeah. What a great insight that is. So, um, 
If you had, to, I have one last question here that I like to ask people, uh, Caleb. I don't know if you have anything else, but but like, so if you fat, if you did if uh, if we did a rewind all the way back to two thousand four, you know, like, and you were talking to yourself, and you're able to give yourself a, a um, uh, you know, you're able to tell yourself something, like give yourself some piece of advice, like like what what, what advice would you give yourself? Hmm. Um, you know, back in 2004, I was a year out of college. And I think at that time, <clears throat> my mindset isn't the way it is today. And the way I think and what I'm reading and what I'm paying attention to and what honestly, like I graduated from college and I remember saying, I will never go back to school again. I'm like, I'm good. Like I did my part. I went all the way through college. I did what I had to do and I'm going to work and that's it. Um, realizing how much I enjoy learning something I found that I'm passionate about, right? With real estate and being able to really pour into that. And then I spend most of my time listening to Audible instead of reading them now, but, you know, business development, personal development, you know, that kind of stuff. It's really helped me think bigger, think better, uh, be in the right headspace, know that, you know, I, I'm capable of doing all these things, right? Uh, and I think uh, in 2004, I probably should have started doing that then. I didn't really start doing this or adopting any of that kind of um, education, studying really until honestly, probably till I went to Keller Williams. And then I started and went to my very first bold and then started. And I was like, what is this? You know, uh, for anyone who's ever been to that. But anyways, I think that has really helped me, um, open my eyes up, be more education based, uh, be more learning based, be open to, okay, what can I do? You know, I think I just kind of felt like, I'm going to go work and I'll just figure it out. And, and really, I don't know that that's probably the biggest thing that over the course of what we've been doing, I could have adopted that a lot earlier on in my, in my career. And perhaps I'd be further along. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, as leaders of your organization, like, you know, as small business owners, entrepreneurs, like your level of success and the level of your company, the bottleneck is always you as the leader. And what you learn, what you you know, what you know, what you're learning, what your skills are, and um, yeah. So 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 your I guess so your answer to that really is is just just hey, start earlier. Like let's speed this thing up so we don't have to. So we yeah, kind of I mean, get going a little bit faster. Yeah. I look at all the stuff we've done in a short amount of time. You know, we've grown quite a bit in the last few years. But we've been I've been I guess technically <laughs> since 2004 at this right a little bit, uh, and that's a long time. How much further along could we be? You know, what does that look like? And I also think, you know, when we first get into this business and somebody telling you to go read uh, the book Winning by Tim Grover or Relentless, you know, the same author or whatever book it is, or even the MREA, like, why do I want to do that? I just need to go sell some houses and I need to make some money. I don't care about that. But I think combining the two makes you that much more powerful um, as in your head, as a business owner, professionally, personally, all that kind of stuff that can help you grow faster. You know, and I think that's what most people don't realize. And um, I don't know. That's just something that I've really gotten into and have enjoyed. And probably, like I said, probably should have adopted it sooner. So. I love that. Yeah, there there is a balance. Like, because some people may only try and learn and not do anything. Well, then you don't, you're learning things, but then it's, then it's falling out. Like, <laughs> like, because you didn't actually implement to where you can have true knowledge, right? Um, but yeah, having that, 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 that right, perfect balance. Yeah. Well, it's understanding that you're going to fail, right? And then when you do, like we get so down on ourselves and like, oh, this is, I'm it, this is it, it's over, I'm done. You know, I'm terrible at this, I got to quit. Well, you got to keep, you know, how do you keep your head in the right place, right? How do you know that, you know what? Failing actually isn't that bad. As long as you paid attention to what you did wrong and then you correct it and then you fix it going forward and then that's a problem down the road. You know, a lot of times it's actually a good, it's a good learning opportunity. But again, those are things I didn't look at it that way before, right? I mean, like you said, Jim, you spent 18 months trying to learn it all so you wouldn't fail at it. Well, if you would have just hurried up and got it out of the way, you probably would have bought more than one in 18 months because you would have learned so much more quicker, you know? And I think it's, again, having that right mindset to know like, hey, you know what? It's okay. I'm going to screw this up. It's going to be messy. It's going to be chaotic. Let's just roll with it and, and enjoy it, you know? I love it. Uh, Caleb, any, any closing questions, thoughts, man? Nope. I loved it. This is great. Dave, appreciate you, man. So how do people get, um, uh, how can people get a hold of you? Like, like if they want some coaching or just want to connect and network, how do people get yeah. a hold of you, man? 
Um, yeah, I mean, you can call me. Uh, do we give out cell phones, emails? Yeah, what? yeah, whatever you want, man. Uh, I mean, you can Google us, obviously. Find us online. Uh, Nations-network.com is our website. Um, Nationsbrothersreno.com is our uh, flip site. Um, and you can call me, 314-956-1047. I'm happy to help. I love helping people, uh, which is like, like I said, why we started the coaching early, you know, a while back uh, and really trying to help some other folks in that space. And um, just in general, if people want to network, talk. Like I said, the whole business has been built on just connecting with people. And uh, I'd love to love to help out others and have them achieve the same success and hopefully more. You know? So yeah, thanks for having me. This is a lot of fun today. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for being on. All right, guys. So that's a wrap. Don't forget it. If you're trying to figure this whole real estate game out, just like Dave Nations was uh, when he was getting started out, or you're kind of even in the intermediate level trying to get to the next level, we help people just like you crush your fears and get to the next level every single day. And we can help you too. To find everything on this episode and the additional resources that we have, go to doorstodeals.com slash 058. One of our best resources that we have for you in St. Louis to do more deals is to just simply email us to deals, D-E-A-L-S, at threedoors.com, and we can help you wholesale deals with lightning speed and get them sold for a top dollar. And if you need some cash to put together deals, go to our website as well, doorsdeals.com slash 058, and click on the funding link. We can close in as little as five days, and we underrate it based on the property, not on the borrower. And then for your agents out there, don't forget to check out our five to five million challenge where we show you how to attract five key relationships into your business that will generate you five million dollars in sales volume every single year like clockwork. The link to this challenge can also be found on doorstodeals.com slash 058. So go out, live your purpose, and above all else, go after your dreams. Take care. Till next time. Thanks for tuning into the show. For more episodes and resources that will unlock Doors to Deals, check out our website, doorstodeals.com.